Wonderful morning again to everyone. Siyempre, good evening or good noon, wherever you are. But we'll uh, start this uh, session with uh, thanksgiving uh, unto the Lord. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this wonderful moment you are giving us again so we can listen and learn, O oh Lord, more about you from your word, more about the Holy Spirit, whom you have given to Jesus <clears throat> to help us live the Christian life that you want us to live. Help us do the ministry of Jesus so each one of us will be powerful instruments in the hands of the Lord, contributing to the advance and the expansion of his kingdom here on earth. So thank you. Holy Spirit, we ask you, as we acknowledge you for who you are and why you were given, we ask you, help us. We give you the freedom and liberty to do whatever you want to do. To build our life, hallelujah, and enable us, O oh Lord, so we can bring glory to the Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> we are continuing with our series for this season uh, learning and talking about the Holy Spirit and even now as I start this session I would like to remind you it is your responsibility to develop your closeness or your intimacy with the Holy Spirit he has already been given to each believer hallelujah the same Holy Spirit lives inside each child of the Father. Hallelujah. The same Holy Spirit. Hmm. But our growth and our contribution to the kingdom will vary depending on our level of closeness or intimacy with Him. That's why I'm saying this moment to do your best, ask Him to help you, so you and the Holy Spirit will be closer to each other. Hallelujah. As we continue to learn about Him even today. So, today, let's talk about why the Holy Spirit was given to us why was he given you know and we will be talking most of this we have heard it already a lot but we need to keep talking and repeating these things until it really become very personal to us to you and me to each believer not only personal but actual and real and ongoing and happening in your life and in my life. The Holy Spirit was given in place of Jesus. We read this in John chapter 14, the verse, verse 16. Verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever hmm. counselor was taken from the greek word paracletus and in this version new international version it's translated into english as counselor in another translation he is called a helper because the word paracletos literally means one that is called alongside to help. Para is by the side 
and Kletos is to help. So one called alongside to help. So he comes to help. He comes to counsel. He comes to comfort. Comforter is another word no? that is used to translate paracletus into English. Then another word that is used is advocate. Advocate means uh, defender or promoter. Yeah? Serving as some kind of a lawyer to defend, to promote, to protect, etc. So that is why the Holy Spirit has been given to each one. Let me repeat, each child of God, each believer or every Christian has been given the Holy Spirit. For what reason? So the Holy Spirit can help us. Help us in what? Help us to be a real, genuine, authentic, and powerful Christian. And remember we were talking about the essence of being a Christian. What is a Christian? A Christian is someone, of course, who has repented and accepted Jesus as Lord, and then starts living his life following the example of Jesus and doing the works of Jesus or doing the ministry of Jesus. That should be every day. You live your life following the example of Jesus every day. And you do the works of Jesus every day. And in that, you need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will help you to live an authentic, genuine, real, and powerful, fruitful Christian life. He will help you do the works of Jesus. We will learn more about that today. Hallelujah. Remember, that's the essence of being a Christian. No? Christian means Christ-like life. So you pattern your life after Jesus. You live his life, but you also do the works of Jesus. Hmm. You cannot, we cannot live the Christian life fully and completely without the help of the Holy Spirit. More so, we cannot do the works of Jesus apart from the Holy Spirit. That's why in John 14 verse 12, we have this word of the Lord, Jesus Christ. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do. Say the word do will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than this. Why? Because I'm going to the Father. The line that says, because I'm going to the Father, implies when I'm going to the Father, the Holy Spirit will come in my place. <laughs> That's the implication. That's the reason why we can do the works of Jesus. That's the reason why we have the potential to do even greater things than what Jesus was doing. Not because of us, but because of the Spirit who will come and take over the place of Jesus and through us will do the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorifying the Father. Giving glory and honor to the Father and to the Son because that's the main task of the Holy Spirit. So please realize that you have the Holy Spirit in you and according to John chapter 14 verse 16 I will ask the Father he will give you another comforter or counselor or helper or advocate to be with you forever. Please remember this line. In your Bible underline this line. He stays with you Forever, you will have a forever helper, a forever counselor, and all the time advocate. Hallelujah. Amen. He will always be with you to comfort you, to assist you in living the Christian life. When you, you know, fail into a lapse, he will speak to you, he will remind you. Later on, we will find those words exactly here in scripture 
as an amplification of the reasons why the Spirit was given. So I want this to be instilled in your mind today as you're listening to me, especially all of you uh, BCC people. You have a forever advocate, counselor, comforter, helper, teacher, and guide. Hallelujah. So you can be a consistent follower of Jesus Christ. So you can be a powerful, authentic, genuine, real, fruitful, productive disciple of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why the Holy Spirit. You know, when we are not living the life of Jesus, when we are not producing the result of Jesus in our life, God is not glorified. The Father is not glorified. You know, when we always fell into the trap of sin and fleshly living, He is not happy. Because the objective of the Father has not been fulfilled in us when we remain in our immaturity and inwardliness of life. Because we fail to relate with the Spirit. We fail to obey His convictions, His pleadings, His reminders. We instead insist living in our own way. Then He is not happy. The Father is not happy. Because our Christian life becomes inconsistent. And as a consequence, it is a disgrace to the Father. So the Holy Spirit is here given to you, me, but again, as I said earlier, it is our responsibility to develop intimacy with Him, to know Him more and more, to relate with Him, growing deeper and closer. Hallelujah. So that He can help us live the authentic life and powerful life and fruitful life that the Father wants us to live. So we can live our life contributing to the expansion of the kingdom here on earth. Many, many more will call on the Father as their Father because of us. We have become fruitful and powerful. Many will reconcile back to the Father as we use the Holy Spirit, as we allow, I should say, the Holy Spirit to use us. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit has been given as our helper. Counselor, comforter, advocate. There's another word in John 16. That's why the Holy Spirit was given. Verse number 7. <clears throat> but I tell you the truth, it's for your good that I am going away. It's for your good. For the good of the disciples that Jesus has to leave them physically. Because he says, unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. Amen. Then in the next verse, verse 8, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. So the Holy Spirit comes to help us by convicting the world. How is this related? Because us, the helper, he comes to help the church. You and me is part of the church of Jesus Christ. And as the church of Jesus, we are commanded or commissioned to go and proclaim the gospel. Gospel with signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. But it is not our role to convict or convince the world. It is the role of the Holy Spirit. So he comes to help us. That while we preach the good news or share the story of Jesus or tell our loved ones the testimonies of our lives because He is at work in us and through us, while we are talking or speaking, the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of those who are listening to us. What is He doing? He will be convicting them. He is the one who will convict them. He is the one who will convince them because the word convict means convince. It is not our responsibility to convince anyone about Jesus, about the gospel. It is the role of the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit will convict them about sin, about righteousness, about judgment, and the many more aspects of godly living. So all we have to do is share the story of Jesus. All we have to do is open our mouth. All we have to do is tell them, hallelujah, simply and easily and kindly and humbly, you know, without being arrogant or proud as if we are the only one that knows everything, without the uh, holier-than-thou attitude. No, because it is not our role to convince anyone or impress anyone. We leave that to the Holy Spirit. He comes to help us become fruitful, become impactful in our life. That is why, again, we need to relate properly with Him. Hallelujah. I'll give you a story. This is a story familiar to many of us already because we have heard a lot of this story. In Acts 11, in verse 20, we read here, Some of them, however, were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. Telling them the good news about Jesus. The next verse, the Lord's hand was with them. And a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. How was it possible that these men from Cyprus and Cyrene, we call this them nameless and faceless disciples or followers of Jesus, was able to be used by God to birth out a church in Antioch that eventually became the headquarters of the Apostle Paul and his missionary band of disciples planting churches everywhere how was it possible because the hand of the lord was with them and the hand of the lord is another way of saying the holy spirit worked powerfully using their lives all they did was tell the people first the jews then the greeks tell them about what the lord has done and the holy spirit was there the hand of the lord Referring to the Holy Spirit of God, the anointing, that's the word, another word that sometimes we use, the anointing of God came with them and unto the people. And the result was the result of the hand of the Lord working to these simple believers, nameless and faceless. They were not the apostles, they were not deacons, they have no office <clears throat> or important role in the church they were just ordinary people nameless and faceless but because they had the faith to obey as the spirit of the lord was leading them to take this action to go from their places to this city called Antioch, lo and behold a wonderful powerful thing has happened so many people believe and turn to the lord and a church was born in the city of Antioch. That is exactly what the Holy Spirit would wish to do. Hallelujah. This is exactly what we're praying about or longing for. That's why we take this time to learn, study, who is this Holy Spirit who was given to us and why was he given to each one of us. Brothers and sisters, each one of you has received the Holy Spirit. If you have received Jesus, the next thing you do is receive the Holy Spirit. If you are ignorant about Him, then find someone to teach you about the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you receive Him. Hallelujah. Because you will not live the Christian life that He wants you to live without His help. He comes to help us live the Christ-like life. And the Christ-like life is a life of purity and power. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is a life of fruitfulness in the kingdom of God. It is a life of joy. Kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. According to Romans 14 verse 17. So, I'm encouraging you, those who are listening and following our lesson, uh, grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Talk to Him all the time. Uh, talk to him all the time. We will be learning about how to 
talk to the Holy Spirit in the way that he wants us to really talk to him in the most fruitful and productive way. Hallelujah. So do not stop following this broadcast. You know, I invite you and share this with your loved ones and friends. So for this morning, I am repeating that each one has been given the Holy Spirit. And why was he given? To help us. Paracletos, helper, comforter, counselor, advocate. He, wa he is here to convict the world, use our life to tell the story of Jesus, and he will convict them. We trust that he is working while we are doing our share, while we are telling, while we are obeying him to tell someone about the love of God through Jesus Christ. We trust him that he is working in their heart, he is working in their mind, he is convicting them, he is convincing them. All we have to do is trust as partners in the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, while you are living your simple life as a housewife, as a farmer, as a husband, as an employee, you know, as a teacher, or whatever is your your day-to-day -day activity, right there, the Holy Spirit is with you because Jesus has already said He is with you forever. He is in you forever. He goes with you. You are now a temple of the Holy Spirit. Just learn to relate with Him, to listen to Him, and obey. He will arrange for you to meet up with someone. He will be already speaking to that someone. We heard this, we read this all the time in Scripture. Remember the story of Peter and of Cornelius, you know, in Acts chapter 8? Cornelius was praying and God spoke to him to look for Peter. Find Peter. While Peter was on the other side of the country in another city, the Holy Spirit spoke to him that he will be going to the house of Cornelius. And they were all arranged by God, me up, and Peter was able to minister to Cornelius because God already prepared the heart and life of Cornelius and his household. That's how it came to pass that the gospel penetrated the Gentile world beginning with the family of Cornelius. We read about the life of Saul, or later on Paul, and the life of Ananias. How they were arranged by God and me. God spoke to Ananias, and God spoke to Saul. You go to this household in a street called Street. There's a man there called Ananias. Meanwhile, Ananias was spoken of by God. Someone is coming into your household. His name is Saul. Minister to him. Hallelujah. We can believe that God will do the same. While we do our regular work, all we have to do is ready for whatever instruction the Holy Spirit will tell us and then have the faith and the courage to act simply, powerfully. Because God has designed every Christian life to be supernatural. Hallelujah. When we say supernatural, we say we mean above the natural or above the normal. While we live the normal life, while we live the natural life, there are moments when God would call us to do something in order to us to live, to experience a supernatural, you know, intervention of the Lord in our life. For the glory of His name. It's not for our own glory. Why He wants us to live a supernatural life is not for our sake. It's for the sake of the world who is in need and for the glory of the Father. Again, the challenge is how to develop closeness and intimacy with the, with, the, with the Holy Spirit. That will be one lesson in the future where we'll be talking about. Hallelujah. But for today, we're learning that the Holy Spirit has been given to help us. He is our counselor. He is our comforter. He is our advocate. He is the convictor of the world. You notice these three things, helper or four things, counselor, helper, advocate, con con comforter. This will not apply in your Christian life while you are sitting down in the Sunday service. You know, you do not need a helper while sitting down, you know, in the Sunday service. You sit down, you stand up, you clap your hands, pull out some few coins, give to the offering box, go home. 
You do not need the Holy Spirit to do all these things. You can do them by yourself. <laughs> he is not there to comfort you while you are sitting down. You are already comfortable sitting down. Most churches are designed to be really comfortable for believers. That's why we do our best to raise money, to build a nice building, make it sure it, you know, it is uh, air-con, you know, curtains are nice. Everything is nice. Comfortable in your physical setup. But here, the word comforter applies to you when you live your life after the example of Jesus and do the works of Jesus. Because trying to live the Christian life, there are setbacks. There are failures. There are moments when you are persecuted. People will, will say all kinds of things to you. That's why. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort you. He will comfort you because you have been going through a difficult moment. You're persecuted. Life is difficult. You have a setback. You have a problem. He will comfort you. He will counsel you. He will stand up to protect and advocate for you. This is not applied. This, all this helping here is, cannot be experienced inside the church building. This is when you go out into the world, live the life of Jesus. And do the words of Jesus that these things will have its powerful meaning in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do not tell me that you are there inside the church and you still need the Holy Spirit to advocate for you, to comfort you. You are already comfortable there. <laughs> this is when you live your life day by day in the world, in the marketplace. In your household, if you have five, seven children, your hands are full, you know, to attend to them. Plus, there are neighbors that ask for your help. There you will need the help of the Holy Spirit. You will need the counsel of the Holy Spirit. You will need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please understand this. Holy Spirit has been given. Hallelujah. Remember? At the same time, he is our teacher. In John chapter 14, verse 26, he will teach us all things. Hallelujah. He will teach you all things. A father will send my name, will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. All things about what? All things about living the life of Jesus. All things about doing the works of Jesus. He will teach you all things. And then another will remind you of everything I said to you. He will remind us. He helps us by reminding us of the many things already we learned, but we forget. Because if there's one thing that men, all of us, can easily do, that's to forget. We easily forget. Difficult for us to learn. And yet the Holy Spirit has been given so He can remind us. He will help us by reminding us. Not only teach us, but remind us. Hallelujah. So when you go out in the world to live the life of Jesus, do the works of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit to help you. You have the Holy Spirit to remind you. Hallelujah. And now you're realizing that. Okay? Now you're learning. Amen? So do not say, I do not know. Do not say, you know. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Christian life has been designed already to function through the Holy Spirit, the help of the Spirit. Do not say, I, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. I'm telling you right now, you can do it. You know why? There's the Holy Spirit who will help you. You can live the life of Christ for the glory of the Father. You can do the works of Jesus. Even though you are new in the faith, even though you just received Jesus three weeks, one month ago, you can start living a life that will honor the Father and will place it because of its result through the help of the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, there are other Christians who have been Christian for years and years and years. And yet, because of failure to know the Holy Spirit, failure to obey Him, failure to develop intimacy with Him, they have become just church people, religious, but not fruitful because they fail to relate with the Holy Spirit. That's why by the grace of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is helping us 
to make some important changes in the way we serve the Lord, in the way we follow Him. We do our best now to follow Jesus. Jesus is called the way. He is called the truth. He is called the life. He has the way. He is the way. And we are called to follow Him. So we seek to follow Him. The Holy Spirit is reminding us and He's teaching us day by day in this way of following Jesus. Hallelujah. The simplicity of being a Christian is following Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God will help us all, help us all, those of you who are listening, to receive today. And my encouragement to you is keep on receiving. Remember these verses, review them, and bring this before the Lord in prayer. Ask humbly the Holy Spirit, who himself is excited and ready to teach you these things. Where you live, during your devotional time, during your prayer moment, talk to him. Holy Spirit, teach me. Give me a clear understanding, personal revelation about these truths. And enable me to live these truths for the glory of the Father. And to honor Jesus. Hallelujah. So today you have a forever helper. Forever counselor. Forever comforter. Forever advocate. Forever convictor. So that when you share your story, you can trust that he will be working in the lives of your loved ones, your friends, your workmates, etc. He will teach you all things. He will remind you of the many already things that we have learned before. And there's many other aspects that we will learn later. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Holy Spirit, thank you that you also were obedient when the Father sent you on a mission here to take the place of Jesus in the lives of the church people. Not only to visit, but to live. Not only live for a moment, for a few hours, for a few weeks, or a few years, but live with us and in us forever. You are our advocate, our helper, our counselor, our comforter. You're the one that will convict the world, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. All we have to do is trust you, rely on you. All we have to do is do our little share according to the scheme of the Father. We are the instruments that will tell the gospel story to people around us. And you are the one that will convict them. We trust you, O Lord, in this. Help us to be obedient, O Lord. Thank you for your patience, God. O Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for the signs and wonders and miracles as we obey the Holy Spirit. Who wants us to live a supernatural life above the natural, above what the others are doing with their lives, O Lord? Only living their lives for themselves. No. Thank you for reminding us that our lives don't belong to us anymore. It belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. And he wants to use this life for the glory of his name. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And in your name we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. God bless you today.